in this scene, it's a rarity, a rarity to get men that are legends and giants coming up. But before we do, go over to official at Insane Throttle Biker News right there. Go follow us. Or now we're on TikTok. Can you believe that? We're on TikTok. TikTok we're going to basically use for pre-video type of commentary. Get over there and follow us. Rarely do you get men like J.R. Reed, Taco Bowman, Sonny Barger, and a whole list of other ones that came from the club scene from their respective clubs that made an impact on the scene as a whole. Many, many New Jacks don't know their history and the type of men it took to lead some of these motorcycle clubs through the hardest times in motorcycle club history. Colin Caesar Campbell passed away this month. He is from Australia, but he was a giant among, among bikers in Australia. He was the National Sergeant at Arms at one point for the Banditos Motorcycle Club. He is also a part of the Milpera Massacre that happened in 85 or 84. I'll look that up in a sec. He was a part of the Campbell Brothers that were a part of that club. He knew honor. He knew loyalty. And he knew the importance of bylaws. The Comancheros broke with some of the club going banditos. Reason why is because of that, uh, how can I use it, uh, like you uh, in England and Austria, that bloke, Jack Ross, thought he was a dictator. He even liked training club members as they were paramilitary. And it didn't help that he was sleeping with somebody's wife. That led to that split. Nobody's ever above the bylaws. And I know Caesar believed that 100%. So what was the Milpera Massacre? We have done some of uh, that footage. But let's go take a look right here at this video. It gives old uh, police and news media footage. Okay, Father's Day 1984. The fight began in the hotel car park where members of the British Motorcycle Club had organized a party to celebrate Australia's Father's Day and had turned the normally quiet suburb into a battleground. It's still not clear how the fight began, but police say two rival motorcycle gangs arrived at the hotel and began fighting with rifles, shotguns, baseball bats and knives. One of those killed was a 14-year-old girl selling raffle tickets. The shooting was still going on as the first of a dozen ambulances arrived. It stopped briefly to allow paramedics and ambulance men to reach the dead and wounded, but police took more than an hour to get control. It was no joke. I always say Australia is like the 1960s. When it comes to the biker scene. Now yeah. They took it a different direction. But the old school guys. Like Caesar Campbell. They're throwbacks. To the Vietnam era right there. Throwbacks. Hardcore. Knew what the rules were. Abided by those rules. And did what they had to do. To enforce them rules. Little more about Milpera, so you can understand what kind of guy Caesar really was. Quote, my brothers died for what? They were just at the wrong place at the wrong day. Now, that was Jeff Snake Campbell. I believe there were six Campbell brothers, a part of this. 
Faced with a loaded gun, instead he held up his hands offering a, a more civilized fist fight. Bang was the response. Snake fell to the ground, clutching his stomach. It was the first shot of the Milpera massacre on Father's Day 1984 outside the Viking Tavern. And within minutes, two more of Snake's five brothers, John Wack Campbell and Colin Caesar Campbell, would be gunned down. Yeah, it started off and it got hardcore at that time. And that's one of the big things that happened was the death of that 14-year-old girl. That incident right there is probably the start of the cops going after the clubs. You know, that's the way it is. Caesar was also the author of three books. And to be able to get in the head of a legend like that is a wake-up experience when you look at some of the stuff that is happening in the scene nowadays. All this debauchery, all this weird stuff happen. Men like this didn't believe in that. They only believed in serious people. They didn't believe that, hey, you had a constitutional right to do whatever you want. No. If you were part of the game, you played the game. Serious men back then. Serious, serious men. And in 2015, the legendary enforcer Caesar Campbell was shot again. As the original bandito wavers between life and death, he uses what may be his last gaps to reflect on four extraordinary decades in the Australian Badlands. Here's the information according to the author of bio. Caesar Campbell, born 18th of July 1946, is one of 13 kids. A champion bare-knuckle fighter, Caesar won 800-plus underground bouts. Later, with brothers Wheels, Bull, Shadow, Snake, Whack, and Chop, he joined the Sydney Gladiators Motorcycle Club in 69. 69. Yep, he was from that air. Then became a Common Charles member in the late 70s ultimately founding the local Banditos chapter as Sergeant-at-Arms in 83. Shot six times at the Milpera Massacre, six, in 84. Uh, he retired to the Snowy Mountains not to tend his secret uh, graveyard, as rumored, but to grow all old alongside his wife Donna and grandkids. He has 15 bullet and shotgun pellets floating around in his body, the three books in his name is Enforcer 2010, Wrecking Crew 2011, and The Outlaw and the Hitman 2016. These books are available on Amazon, and I'll actually put links in the description box for those books so you can take a look at them. Now, One Percenter Bikers does have somewhat of a profile on Caesar. When he was born uh, at Matter Hospital in Newcastle, South Wales. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, he was one of six brothers. He also had uh, adopted brothers, Mario Chopper uh, Chante. He was killed at uh, Myopira. Again, he was with the Gladiators Motorcycle Club. Let's see if they have any information uh, on that uh, real quick. There, there, he was with them. It was founded in the 60s, 1960 to be exact. Uh, looks like the Grafton Clubhouse location was used to host multiple expedition or exhibition boxing matches. So yeah, the Gladiators right there, old club. He moved to the Sydney chapter of the Comancheros in 82, and that was led by uh, Anthony Snodgrass Spencer. 
Meetings were held between members of the Sydney chapter and Banditos USA. It was decided that the Banditos would patch over the Common Cheryl Sydney City chapter. While in Banditos MC, he once again took up the role of the sergeant. That's when the, the tensions grew, went into Milpera. I got a video on that. Go take a look. Uh, he did go to prison, it looks like, for Milpera. Uh, former Secretary of the Band was unfortunately turned state's witness. Again, he has books like The Enforcer, Wrecking Crew, uh, then the one more. What is that one? The Outlaw and the Hitman. Not many of these type of guys are left in the MC scene. J.R. Reed has passed away. Taco Bowman has passed away. Sonny's getting up there in age. Now you got over in Australia, somebody like Caesar that passed away. All the older Vietnam vet or Vietnam air club guys are up there in age now. Most of them are probably retired out, not riding anymore. But if you ever, ever get a chance to go shake their hands, sit down with them, talk to them, you're just going to get blown away. It's not something that you'll ever get on YouTube or social media, but being able to sit right in front of them, hearing the stories, hearing what it was like, is mind-blowing. I think that's the difference between my generation and this younger one is we got to learn from those guys. It's a lot different for us and we think a lot differently than these young New Jacks do. I basically say these young New Jacks don't know their head from their ass, but that's the way it is. That's the way life is. I'm told you have to evolve. That's kind of why I got this TikTok thing. I was told I had to evolve. At Insane Throttle. You got to go over there. And then, then again, I'm learning uh, the Instagram. Get your butt over there. So our thoughts go out to Colin uh, Caesar Campbell's uh, family. I know he's going to be a miss. And I know he's going to be missed in the biker scene, the club scene. It's really like an end of an era is starting to come to a close with all these older guys leaving the scene. I just wonder what they think of what it's become now. And I'm almost guessing they're probably rolling over in their graves about it. If they've already passed away or shaking their head saying, whatever. <laughs> anyway, don't forget to like and subscribe to the video. Also, there is a GoFundMe link in the description box. That's to help out Caesar's family. If you guys can pass that around, I really appreciate that. You guys are awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm going over to the radio station right now. Don't forget to download our Insane Throttle radio app. Over on Google Play, yes, we're working on all our different projects right now, and that's going to include an Apple uh, app if we can ever get the programmer to get our Roku stuff right. Talk to you guys later. Have a good one.